I came from a family of lawyers. My grandfather, from my mother's side, was a judge. You know, my uncle was was a judge. I mean, so we are very much embedded into legal tradition. Mm -hmm. and my father was a lawyer. Uh, uh, he was a quite a, a religious person. Fermi believe as a lawyer in certain basic values, you know, which are not really disconnected from his religious belief. Fairness value, social solidarity, work ethics, you know, all the core secular values, if you like to call them, that we all live by or would like to live by. And uh, he was head of the Bar Association in, in Egypt, you know, started, I think, in 1958 and then on and off. But when he died in 77, he was still president of the Bar Association. He was re-elected for time for that. This was some of the darkest time of Egyptian history when we had a very authoritarian, a very repressive regime. Nasser, you know, started, of course, with a grand vision. <laughs> on, on foreign policy, he was, I think he was a pioneer in terms of trying to achieve Establish Egypt's identity, its connection with the Arab world, with the African world, with, with the South, you know, India, Yugoslavia, Indonesia, you know, the major pillars of the South. It was, I think, instrumental in the sort of awakening of the South, uh, the identifying the double standard that had been uh, applied by the West versus the South at that time. The whole question of colonialism and the need to end colonialism and independence and all that sort of thing. But on the domestic front, he was a brutal dictator. There was never you know, an ability to speak freely. There was no freedom of the press. There was no parliament. There was no parties. And, uh, and my father, as a lawyer, you know, obviously realized that you cannot really have you know, a, a country that is hoping to reinvent itself, if you like, uh, without empowering its people. He came into major clashes at different times with, with Nasser and Sadat at that time also. In 1961, I remember, he spoke on television exactly about the kind of things I'm speaking about today. You know, freedom of the press, freedom to establish parties, uh, democracy, multi-party system. He was asked, in fact, to, to leave the podium, you know, and. Uh, was never recorded again on television. He was quite ostracized by the regime. People were even scared to come and shake hands with him at one point, or even go to him to instruct him for the law cases. This was considered to be a defiance of the, of the regime. So I saw some of this kind of episodes with my father, but he was never shaken. You know, he was never shaken in his belief that this is the way to go. He was very low-key or very modest person, very uh, soft-spoken person. But he had actually a will of steel, and I saw that. 
you know, he was a rallying point for people who were looking for freedom. Lawyers, judges, you know, students. You know, I had a lot of admiration for him, of course. But I also more importantly understood that, you know, you have to stand for your own belief. It doesn't matter whether you're alone or, or a minority or a majority. You just have to follow your conscience, follow what you think is the right thing to do. And, uh, and I still believe that this will prevail at the end. It might take you a long time. You have to be patient. Even if you don't able to achieve what you want during your lifetime, at least, you know, put the seeds for change. And, uh, and that, I think, how, how we did. I'm thinking as I'm sitting here, uh, maybe one of the things that has obviously motivated me and continue to be with me as I go through my life is my father unfinished business. You know, he, he started a process, you know, and I know he was on the right track. He was not able to succeed and, and maybe I should build on that and, and others will do.